And let me speak to one other issue. Let me speak to one other issue, the GDP, and whether or not there, we are in a recession. Both Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in a recession. Let me just give you what the facts are in terms of the state of the economy. Number one, we have a record job market of uh, record unemployment of 3.6 percent today. And the Inflation Reduction Act will add another $370 billion in clean energy tax credits in reconciliation, including incentives to accelerate domestic production of solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, and critical materials processing. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. Thank you very much. This is my first video update for the day here in Athens, Greece, and I am standing in front of a beautiful sculpture from the famous Greek artist Aristides Patsoglu. Definitely search for this artist. He is absolutely amazing, and this is one of his sculptures right here in the center of Athens, Greece. Let's talk about some news. So, you saw the intro video, and uh, that was Biden speaking to the American people and letting the American people know that the United States is not in a recession because the term recession has been redefined. According to the Biden White House, a recession is no longer two consecutive quarters with negative GDP. That definition as of about a month ago has changed. And uh, we don't really have a new definition of recession. We just know that according to the Biden White House, the uh, United States is not undergoing a, a recession. It is undergoing a transition. Everything is fluid, you see. And uh, just like gender is fluid, well, economics are also fluid. And so the United States is transitioning and they are transitioning to this new green world, this green utopia. So don't call this a recession, according to Biden. This is just a transition and uh, everything is, is fine. According to uh, Joe Bidenopoulos, Greece's favorite son, no recession in the United States. It is merely a transition. It is just but a flesh wound, as uh, Monty Python would say from the Holy Grail. So uh, that is the news, the very, very big news, that uh, the United States is not in a recession, if you believe the Biden White House, but the reality of the situation for all of us that live on planet Earth and not on uh, planet La La Land, woke La La Land, this is indeed a recession. And I uh, actually did a video about this right next to the Megaro Musikis, next to the American Embassy, about, I want to say, three, four weeks ago, where I noted that many analysts are saying the, U the U.S. will indeed be in a recession, the actual technical definition of a recession, um, this month. And sure enough, we have got that. We have got the United States in a recession. And uh, what is the Biden White House going to do about it? They're going to print more money. <laughs> that is their plan, to print more money so that they can get out of the recession, which of course means that the United States is going to actually be in a stagflation. But uh, maybe that's another video for another time. For now, don't worry, everybody. Uh, Joe Bidenopoulos, he's got everything under control, right? Everything is under control. Notice in the video how quickly he walked off. He like bolted out of there. But uh, what a strange press conference that was to see Joe Biden lie to the American people right there, open, openly, transparently lie to the American people and try to convince them that uh, that the economy is great. It's great, everybody, according to Joe Biden. Come on, man. The economy is awesome, man. Look at the look at the blonde hairs on my leg. They're standing up. The economy is great. I'm Joe Biden, and I'm telling you right now, we have record job growth, 
record uh, low unemployment, record investment, uh, record manufacturing. Come on, man, you dog-faced pony soldier. Everything is great. This is not, uh, this is not a recession, man. When I was growing up in Delaware, the definition of a recession was 16, nah, 56 weeks of consecutive negative GDP or something like that. Come on, everybody. What would Corn Pop say? Corn Pop would say we are not in a recession. <laughs> Blame it on the Putin tax hikes. <laughs> this is Putin's recession. <laughs> that is Joe Biden. So let's move on now and, uh, <laughs> and talk about, let me do an update real quick about the uh, WNBA, Anthony Blinken. I have to talk to Sergei Lavrov, uh, prisoner swap story that I talked about in my video yesterday. Well, we've actually got a response from, uh, from the Russian foreign ministry and boy, is it good. Boy, is it really good. So, uh, Let's see here. The Department of State, the spokesman for the Department of State, Mr. Uh, Ned Price, he said at a news briefing yesterday that the U.S. made it clear to the Russian Federation that we are seeking a conversation between State Secretary Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov. The request has been conveyed to Russia directly and repeatedly. Price said the U.S. expects the top the two top diplomats to have an opportunity to speak in the coming days, he added. And uh, what was the Russian foreign ministry's reply? Well, Maria Zakharova told journalists in reference to Washington's request for a phone conversation between Lavrov and Blinken, she said Lavrov will, and I quote, pay attention to this request when time permits. <laughs> when time permits. Oh my God. Zakharova said on Thursday that the Russian foreign minister currently has a busy schedule with international contacts, including a Shanghai cooperation organization, ministerial summit, and some bilateral meetings. The U.S. plans to use the call to follow up on its substantial proposal on the release of the two Americans currently held in custody in Russia, basketball player Brittany Greiner who was arrested on drug smuggling charges, and Paul Whelan, who has been jailed on suspicion of espionage. I love the response from Zaharova. Uh, you know, the foreign minister, he has a busy schedule with international contacts, the Shanghai cooperation, uh, many bilateral meetings, and uh, this WNBA prisoner swap, he'll get to it when he has time. So, Let's, uh, let's discuss now the, uh, the meeting, the other phone call that took place in the White House yesterday, and that was between China and the U.S., Xi and Bidenopolis. And the White House reading on this presented uh, a picture very different from the uh, Chinese reading on this phone call. According to the White House, the conversation between Biden and Xi focused on climate change and health security. That is what they talked about with, uh, with the Chinese. They did mention Taiwan, according to the readouts, where Biden underscored that the U.S. policy has not changed and that the U.S. strongly opposes unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. That was pretty much the Biden White House reading. Of course, Pelosi is on her way to Taiwan. Supposedly, she's heading to Taiwan. As a matter of fact, she's even uh, sent out invites to other uh, members of Congress to join her on a trip. And then we also have U.S. Uh, carrier groups heading to Taiwan as well and all kinds of uh, military buildup taking place ahead of Pelosi's scheduled trip to uh, Taipei. But uh, the readout from the Chinese, well, it is very different than this readout from the Biden White House, which makes it seem like Biden and Xi 
we're talking about the uh, green new world and renewables, the Chinese, what they told Biden is that he is playing with fire. And I quote from the Chinese readout, those who play with fire will perish by it. It is hoped that the U.S. will be clear eyed about this. According to the Chinese readout, Xi highlighted that the historical ins and outs of the Taiwan question are crystal clear. And so are the fact and status quo that both sides of the Taiwan Strait belong to one and the same China. And uh, the readout from the Chinese side, side was uh, much, uh, much more detailed, especially with regards to Taiwan, than uh, the White House readout. So the message is crystal clear to uh, Bidenopolis. Those who play with fire will perish by it. It is hoped that the U.S. will be clear-eyed about this. But the problem now for the U.S. and the problem for Bidenopolis is that he has been boxed in. U.S. has boxed themselves in in a very, very big way because if they send Pelosi to China, well, then you risk, if they send Pelosi to Taiwan, then you risk escalation with China and even military escalation with China. If you uh, don't send Pelosi to China, to Taiwan, then you give the impression that uh, China has called your bluff and China wins. And this is why you have rhinos like Mitch McConnell saying that Biden has to absolutely now send Pelosi to Taiwan. Otherwise, it's going to show weakness on the side of the U.S. And uh, you have Taiwan reports coming out of Taiwan that they shot down some sort of uh, or they fired at some sort of uh, surveillance drone over Taiwan the other day. So, um, you know, this. This escalation, this military distraction, perhaps, that Blinken and Sullivan concocted is, uh, is, really, is really coming out to be quite a big headache for the U.S. and for the Biden White House. And uh, it is the last thing that the United States needed on top of a botched, disastrous Ukraine policy and what is now uh, a recession in the US. A conflict with China and this type of escalation with China is the last thing that uh, the United States of America needed, but leave it to the geniuses at the Department of State and uh, the National Security Department, people like Jake Sullivan and Blinken, leave it to these genius wonder boys to, um, to place the US into an unwinnable situation. So we also had another meeting, this one in Europe, and it took place between Viktor Orban and the Austrian uh, Chancellor, and they met in Vienna. And we have some very interesting uh, statements coming out of Orban and coming out of uh, Austria. And let me read you. First, let me get to, let's do the statement from Orban. Let's talk about Orban's statement first. And this is what Orban said. He said that the EU is heading for a war economy. He said that Hungary determines its own energy policy and any attempt by Brussels to interfere with this will not find favor with Hungarians. He was referencing this 15% gas rationing voluntary gas rationing deal that Ursula van der Kreese, uh concocted the other day in order to uh, save a collapsing Germany and find a way to centralize Brussels' is, is control of member states' energy policy. Orban said that our people don't like that kind of thing. And he said in reference to the EU plan that if Brussels has a say in what to do with our own energy, regardless of Brussels' good intentions or bad intentions, it will not find favor with Hungarians. Orban also said that uh, the fact that Brussels is already implementing re uh, energy rationing suggests that Europe is moving towards a wartime economy 
And Orban added that unless peace is reached in Ukraine, we will not be able to solve any problems. There will be no energy and the entire European Union will be pushed into an economic situation of war. The Hungarian premier noted that an energy crisis would also lead to a recession and political instability across Europe, like what you are seeing in Italy, where Mario, the ECB unelected prime minister of Italy, had to bolt and run for the exit door because he saw what is coming not only to Italy, but what is coming to the European Union, which is recession, instability, food shortages, an energy crisis, and Draghi said, I am out before it all collapses. Now, we had statements coming from the Austrian Chancellor, and uh, this is what Chancellor Nieheimer said after his meeting with Viktor Orban. He said, sanctions must hit those against whom they are directed more, but not harm those who decide them. And the Austrian chancellor noted that an EU ban on Russian gas is, and I quote, impossible. Austria's position is that an embargo on gas is impossible, not only because Austria depends on Russian gas, the German industry also depends on it. And if it all, and if it all collapses, the Austrian industry will also collapse and we will face mass unemployment. That is what the Austrian chancellor said. In other words, checkmate Russia. In other words, if Germany collapses, which it is on a trajectory to do, then Austria collapses. How are those sanctions working out for you, Ursula and the European Union? You're on the seventh package. How about an eighth package of sanctions on Russia? Why not uh, send the entire European Union over the cliff once and for all? Why don't you place that, an embargo on Russian energy like you were talking about a month ago? Whatever happened to that Russian energy embargo that was supposed to collapse the, uh, the Kremlin and lead to a regime change in Moscow? It's not working out too well. So um, let's wrap things up then with this law from the Ukraine parliament from the Rada, which has now approved a special status for Polish citizens in Ukraine. Now remember the map that Medvedev uh, published on his Telegram channel yesterday, and which I talked about on my video update yesterday? Well, that map showed some, uh, the second map that Medvedev highlighted showed some significant territorial gains for Poland mostly Lviv and the entire west of uh, Ukraine. It showed significant territorial gains for Romania as well as for Hungary. Well, if you go by this latest legislation that has passed the Ukrainian parliament, then you would probably believe that Medvedev's map is more accurate than, uh, than many people uh, think it was. Does that make sense? Did I just make sense there? I don't think so. What I want to say is, <laughs> what I want to say is that uh, looking at Medvedev's map and looking at this legislation that passed the parliament, well, it looks like Medvedev is uh, on point. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I don't know. I was starting to speak like Joe Bidenopoulos there for a second. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, um, the Ukrainian parliament, the Verkhovna Rada on Thursday, adopted legislation allowing Poles to legally stay in the country of Ukraine for one and a half years without needing to obtain any special permits while enjoying similar rights to Ukrainians. The bill on special guarantees for Polish nationals was supported by 283 MPs, according to MP Yaroslav Zelensky. The new law, once signed by Ukrainian President Zelensky, will provide the Poles with the right to employment, economic activity, education, medical care, as well as make them eligible for some social benefits. If I didn't know any better, 
it seems like this law that has passed the Ukraine parliament is, uh, is more like a merger between Ukraine and Poland, right? That's what it seems like. And I'm not alone in that thinking because um, the former president of Ukraine, Mr. Yanukovych, the president that was overthrown in the Obama-Biden EU coup of Ukraine in 2014, he actually criticized this law. In his opinion, he said, the current rapprochement between Ukraine and Poland may lead to the actual merger of the countries and to the total annihilation of the Ukrainian state. So here's what's, uh, what I think is happening. This law that has passed, which basically means Ukraine and Poland are going to merge, is kind of like the, uh, the safety valve for Ukraine and for Alensky. You know, it's, it's the one way out of, uh, of a potential collapse of the entire Ukrainian state and of a potential takeover of Ukraine by Russia. In other words, let's just, uh, let's just merge with Poland. That'll save us. This is their off ramp. In case of fire break glass, that's what this is. When the fire is gonna start to rage, they're gonna break the glass and uh, Poland is just going to, to make it official. They've already got this type of legislation passed by Ukraine where a Polish citizen has the same exact rights as a Ukrainian citizen. So all that is needed is just to make it official and to just lay claim on uh, whatever's left of Ukraine once Russia moves uh, towards Odessa and past Odessa and uh, touches Transnistria. That's when you're gonna just make this law official and merge the west of Ukraine with Poland. That's how I see it because other than that, I can't see why anyone in Poland would be interested in living and working in Ukraine at this moment. It's actually the reverse. People in Ukraine want to live and work in Poland, not the reverse direction. So this really doesn't benefit Polish citizens. I mean, there's no reason for someone living in Poland to want to go live in Kiev at this moment and obtain these special citizenship rights. Am I wrong? Let me know, people living in Poland, if I'm wrong. But if uh, the S hits the fan and Russia looks like it's gonna take, up, take over all of uh, Ukraine, well then you can just kind of break the glass and just, tell, and just tell Poland, look, we already have the legislation in place for your citizens to be treated like our citizens, so why not just uh, annex? what's what's left of Ukraine, namely the west of Ukraine, for which we go back to Medvedev's map and we say Medvedev may actually be signaling to Poland with that second map that, you know, hey, Poland, we're on board. Go for it. We've got no problem with you taking over Banderistan, <laughs> as, as many Russians uh, like to refer to it, the west of Ukraine. Here's the map. Here it is, guys. We're fine with this. That could be what Medvedev is signaling. So obviously Medvedev, by the way, I'm sure he knew that this was going up for a vote in the Rada. So look at the timing, maybe that signals something. So that is the law there that passed in Ukraine. And let's do a quick clown world. And uh, the clown world really should have been Biden's speech in the intro. But in this clown world, we're gonna talk about a recession and a collapse in Germany. And this one has to do with the gas energy collapse in Germany. And we have the German city of Hanover, which has taken some drastic measures in an attempt to reduce energy consumption as Germany is bracing for a looming energy crisis. The city of Hanover, the authorities have cut off hot water in public buildings and reduced their maximum heating temperatures as part of their energy saving campaign. Hanover authorities gave the city's sports enthusiasts the cold shower, quite literally on Monday when they announced hot water would be switched off in all of the city's public buildings, including sports halls, gyms, and pools from now on. Public employees will also have to wash their hands with cold water while at work under the new regulations. That is the news coming out of Germany a once pr 
prosperous, developed, rich country, a country full of industry, a country respected for its industry and for its manufacturing, has now been reduced to cutting off hot water at football stadiums <laughs> and other public uh, venues and buildings. All for what? For what? For Elensky? For the Elensky regime? To stick it to Russia? For what exactly? What was all of this for? For regime change in Russia? It didn't happen. It failed. The best thing that Ola Schultz could do at this moment is to call up Putin and apologize. Apologize. Say, I'm sorry. We tried to overthrow your government. And this should be his phone call with him. We tried to overthrow your government. I listened to uh, the idiots at the Biden White House, the Blinkens and the Austins and the Sullivans and Bidenopolis and Newland. I listened to them and thought we were going to get regime change. It didn't work out. Vladimir, I'm sorry we messed up. Please forgive us and please turn the uh, energy back on. That should be his phone call. And he should do that yesterday. Not today, he should do that yesterday. And then he should fire Habeck and Brabak. That's what he should do. That is exactly what he should do. But he won't, because he's weak. And he doesn't run the government. The Greens run the government. And the Greens' goal is to deindustrialize Germany. And the neocon goal, the US neocon goal, is to deindustrialize Germany, to keep Germany down, and to divide Germany and Europe from Russia. That is the goal. And so Olaf Scholz will not apologize and he will not save Germany. The exact opposite. He is sending more weapons to Ukraine. I believe 1.7 million more euros of weapons are going to Ukraine. So it's, uh, it's a one-way street for Germany at this point. And uh, there is no reverse gear. So we are only in July. We are only in July, the end of July. And all of this is happening. Can you imagine what things are going to be like in October or November? How are things going to be for Germany in October or November? You think Ursula van der Crazy has a plan? She has no plan. Orban is telling the world. He is screaming at the top of his lungs. Give credit to Orban. He is saying to everybody in the entire world, this is what he told the Austrian Chancellor, there is no plan. We need to get off this sinking ship. We need to turn the ship around. Otherwise, we're going to have a European collapse. Not just a German collapse, a European collapse. And for Austria, a German collapse is an Austrian collapse. That is what the Austrian Chancellor said. So the Austrian Chancellor better get on the phone with Schultz and tell him what I just said. Schultz, apologize to Putin now. You have to apologize now. That is what should happen. Anyway, it's not going to happen. We're going to get more and more clown worlds like this one that I just read, where Europe and Germany and many more countries in the EU are going to be shutting off water and shutting off uh, washing machines and businesses are going to close and they're going to impose energy lockdowns and all of these things because, uh, because they still believe that um, they're the stronger ones when in fact we have now seen that Russia is the big boy in the room. Anyway, <laughs> that is the video. I will leave it there, uh, theduran.locals.com. Check out Odyssey, Rumble, BitChute, and Telegram. That's where you'll find the Duran, that's where you'll find me. And uh, check out Alexander's channel as well. You will find him on all those platforms also. And uh, check out the Durant's channel, which is on all the platforms as well. Take care.